So, I'm going to upload on TikTok and YouTube. So, if this is YouTube, hey, y'all. This is Jacolia or Jacolia Gems. Thank you for once again coming back home, family. Now, if you have not already done so, do yourself and me a favor. And if you like what you hear, definitely stay to kick up your shoes and relax your feet. Sankofa, come back home. Hit the subscribe button. If you want to TikTok, hey y'all. So let's just jump into today's video. So for those of y'all that know, y'all already know I'm heavy on the podcasting. I'm just not one to like react to everything that I see because I really don't care about celebrity and celebrity news. When I do comment on it, it's to open up a bigger picture and to psychoanalyze some things. Um and spark some conversations in the black community to point out some discrepancies and breakdown in communication, whether it's between male, female, so on and so forth, right? So, y'all know my favorite podcast is the Joe Button Podcast. And it's honestly, other than The Pivot, it's the only podcast that I reach for it on a consistent basis. I don't like a lot of Anyway, it's the one and only podcast that I reach for on a consistent basis. So I'm about to give you guys some background because everybody does not watch the Joe Button podcast. So y'all already know who Joey is. He is from New Jersey. Definitely top tier lyricist, undoubtedly. Um, I'm, I don't even have to explain to y'all who Joe is. I'm going to talk to you guys about Melissa Ford um, because and, and Joe as well. Because some people know Melissa Ford specifically as a video model, video vixen. Some know her as a radio personality, media personality from the Jason Lee show. A lot of people are being introduced to Melissa's personality on the Joe Button podcast. So when Mel came into the Joe Budden podcast, there's another host by the name of Ish. Her and Ish had this chemistry dynamic. Both of them are very highly attractive people. Highly attractive people. He's very smart, very intellectual, so on and so forth. Based off of male descriptions of the type of men that she would typically like physically, he fits this category and that's not a reach. She described somebody. He was yeah. Yeah. So Joe created a narrative and they ran with it, leaned into it for content's sake that, you know, there was some flirtation X, Y, and Z going on between Mel and Ish. Mind you, at this time, Ish had a pregnant baby's mother at home. Now, as a woman, after a while, Mel definitely started to do entirely too much. I will preface this statement by saying, since Melissa is an above average looking woman, there's insecurities that's going to automatically raise up on the inside of other women when she enters the room. Just like there are preconceived notions about her from men and women when she enters the room. Unfortunately, um, According to male things, you know, far, sometimes she say that she wish she would have leaned more into her sexuality. She also has admitted that starting off your career in one way can dampen you and harm you. Melissa Ford graduated from college with her forensic science degree. She is far from a stupid woman. Um, looks wise and educational wise, she would be considered to be a unicorn. Most people do not get to know highly attractive women beyond their looks. Melissa has played aloof and naive on a lot of circumstances. There were some times when I'd be sitting back like she is acting like a bird. She is behaving as if she does not know what's going on. Then there are some times when I can tell like she was genuinely lost in conversation and instead of the men that she's on the podcast with 
explaining things to her in depth, she gets piled on a lot. There have been instances where Mel has been held accountable when she needed to be held accountable because sometimes, baby, you be sounding crazy. More times than not, this has become entirely too cringy to watch. Melissa Ford has not been able to vocalize or articulate an opinion without being laughed at, without being cut off, without all of a sudden basically being treated as if she does not know how to formulate a own thought. And I find it very interesting because when you have another beautiful, articulate woman on the show, such as Remy Ma, she's not treated like this. Remy is also more vocal about her boundaries and she has a man and men in her life. Melissa is not very vocal. There are some times when she'll lean into it. And I'm telling you, Mel, when you're in a room with men and you're telling them SMD, as a woman, that's already you lining yourself up to be disrespected. We cannot play with men a certain type of way and then expect a certain type of respect from them. I'm not about to sit up and let no man call me no B word, but I'm also from Chicago. And I realize that that's some New York nigga stuff. That's some New Jersey nigga stuff. Like, I've, I've watched it. I already mentioned Remy, but she has said before on her Dream Champs episode that she never understood why women would get offended when they was called a B word by men because she grew up with her grandmother calling her that. I'm going to tell you, it's literally been three men in my entire life who have called me out of my name. And all three of them cowered after the word left their mouth. I do not conduct myself as a B. Every woman... <laughs> who is called that word is not called that word inaccurately so there are scriptures in the book of ecclesiastics that talks about a woman that's a shameless dog melissa don't act like a bee she don't carry herself like that and this week this was the second time that a man has publicly called melissa ford a b-word well see what you're talking about a couple of podcasts ago Joe began to repeat a story between that Cameron and Mace put out that they used to run trains on girls, women, young ladies, and I think halfway houses. And Mel was kind of like, y'all may not want to mention it out loud because a lot of women that were in halfway houses are underage and with sex traffic and they want to be careful because the climate that we live in, women can say out, come out and say anything. Cameron and Mace took that as if Melissa was putting that on their jacket. And this is what tells me that there's a great communication breakdown between the man and the woman. She was actually looking out for them. Wasn't throwing them under the bus or anything. They literally had just got finished talking about everything that's going on in media right now. Cam posted and called her a B word on his Instagram. And then they said something, you know, on their podcast and they have the right to respond. You cannot tell people how to respond. You can't ask them to listen to what it is that you said initially. Or, as Melissa did, she can say, you know what, I didn't have to say it. And she left it alone. Ice doubled down on her being wrong. Joe doubled down on her being wrong. And Flip didn't say too much, but kind of said something in the chorus part excited with Joe. Ish was 100% quiet, which said to me a lot as a woman. Because Ish is normally one of the first ones to speak up and to hold Mel accountable. But a lot of times he stops himself from agreeing with her because they'll say that he's capping for her and he'll lean back into the rhetoric that was created in the beginning of the show. Some people have begun to say, um... A lot of people are very disappointed in how Melissa is handled on the show. Mel has talked about the fact that she has been in this industry for years and she has been placed in situation, not only in this industry, but in life in general, where she has been taken advantage of by men. She loses her voice. She finds this is a traumatic response. The way that she finds and she cowers and she'll laugh, she'll giggle, she'll make noises. Because even in the instances on this show, when Melissa Ford has been vocal about her heartbreak, 
about her being cheated on, about her finding her fiance having sex with another woman on tape, about a lot of different things. Even when she talked about getting hit in the head with a bottle on a reality show, it was made fun of. They even crack jokes, which is social gas, which is corporate gaslighting. Because remember, this is her job. They crack jokes and corporate gaslighting about the possible lawsuits that she would foul. And this tells me is because y'all know that y'all out of order. You're creating a hostile work environment for her at this point, And you're doing so publicly. You guys are having team functions directly after work and excluding her. That's discrimination. And I'm not saying file a lawsuit or anything like this. I'm just saying, like, look at the type of things that happen right before our eyes. And is Mel the best fit on the show? No, she's not. She ain't got enough unfinished. She hasn't been around enough basketball talks, enough football talks, enough barbershop talks. She has not been at enough spade games and been the only woman in the room when it's straight boy talk, at least not around these type of men. See, I'm used to stuff like that. I sit back and I watch episodes and I be like, Mel is 10 years my senior, but baby, not me. <laughs> Please tag me in as a B Mike. <laughs> not me. I have watched them have episodes and they treat the birds, you know, the drop that Joe got. Why do you love birds? With the utmost respect. Don't cut them off. Don't tell them they sound stupid. Agree with them. All of these other things. And I just sit back and I be like, wow. This literally proves how a lot of women feel. Mel has even said they want me to come up here and do some whole stuff. Joe like, no, that's not what I said. I said that um, we need a whole up here for whole stories. So that it could be interesting. Why would a woman who is focused on their brand and appearing as a lady come on a podcast just to share her whole stories. Why would she talk under her own skirt? That don't mean she not the fun girl. That means that she moves with some type of discretion. Yes. Who don't love a good whole story in private? <laughs> I mean, and if y'all want to tell whole stories on the internet, they fun. I'd rather put them out in a book and then in some movies. She has said that y'all are mean. Case in point, they was going out. She not even allowed to go on team trips. If they go to the Super Bowl, Mel can't go unless the girlfriend's going. It's a little confusing. If they going to Vegas, Mel can't go unless the girlfriend's going. This is a work outing. Your girlfriends and your wives do not work with you. So your female employee and co-worker can only mix and mingle if your girlfriends are there. Is that like not some form of quit pro sexual harassment or something? Like, I don't know. Like, <laughs> It's just really interesting to me. And if she says something and if she speaks up for herself and if she established a boundary, it'll backfire on her. She's trying to make a name for herself in the networking space since she took this job to gain some more experience, to get her feet wet. And they pissing on her and telling her it's raining. Last time I checked, Mel said that that wasn't her fetish. Now, it's a few other girls that I've said that they're getting on for a nice bag of money. But Mel has openly said that that ain't, that ain't something that she likes to do. So, my question is, why is it okay for her to work in a room full of men and be disrespected? Girl dads. <laughs> These are the same men that say how much they love their mothers and how much they love their girlfriends. I'm going to tell y'all, right? 
I've been with a man that was very disrespectful to me. It was horrible. I was equally, if not more disrespectful when things got that way. I watched how he treated other people. So when the disrespect started towards me, I was shocked. Yet we cannot be. The same man was jealous. I'm going to tell y'all, when they finally let Mel go out and Joe <clears throat> ain't even invite her. E did. Ian did. Um, Didn't even invite her. Didn't even want her coming out. Mel call up. One of Joe friends, Mo, female woman, and invite her. And Joe didn't like that because they like, you ain't even supposed to be here. She was like, well, it's a girl thing. I'm going to tell you, right? When I was with my ex, a lot of nights I was the only woman. We'd be playing space. They'd be, girl, they'd be having guy talk, whatever. I'd be sitting back minding my business just soaking up knowledge. They didn't want other women there. So I, I get that. I also get that if a woman has never been out with this group of guys before. If a woman has never been out with this group of guys who openly and vehemently and repeatedly say, we don't hang out with male. No, male can't come. Why wouldn't she call a woman who's now a mutual, her associate, but Joe's friend, to come and to kick it with her? But okay, I get it. Then feel some type of way because when they get to the other spot that they go into, Mel come up by her coat and she walk in the room. No, she's supposed to stay with the people that she came in with. I'm sorry, former popular girl here. All of my homies knew. We in a club. I got you in here for free. You're going to get some free drinks, too. I'm going to VIP. I'm going to the DJ booth. You can follow me. That don't mean that's where your access is going to be. I'm going to come back. I'm in my bag right now. I've been to events where I was the guest, and I'm going to sit down. You go ahead and do what you got to do. Uh, it's just, I don't like it. It's nasty. It's it's nasty, Mel. You need to leave. Do not re-sign your contract. Please don't. And everything that you want to do for mental health, it's a market out there. A neurodivergent black woman out here. Hi. Going back to school next fall so I can finally complete my double major. It was nursing and psychology. Now it's going to be environmental psychology. And I'm thinking about a second major in Africana studies so I can take up learning Igbo when I get to the bachelor and a master, you know, level of it. We need mental health shows. So that gaslighting, you know, people creating scenarios to make you question your own reality. And love bombing you by making you feel like you're the best fit for this spot and nobody else can do this like you can. Just to come with the devaluing <laughs> of you. Mel, you, you, you know what I'm talking about. But see, they believe that these are made-up terms, though their actions are fulfilling what they dogpile on you about. So black men, if you work with a black woman and she's openly disrespected by other black men, when does protect the black woman come into space, especially when she's looking out for you? And even if she comes back and say, just like Mel did, I didn't have to add that in there. She could have doubled down and said, this is why I said what I said. She did it. Why y'all be feeling so comfortable calling women bitches? 
Where did that come from? Where did that malice and that hate and that discontentment start? That's a you issue. That's not that woman's issue. This is Jacolia of Jacolia Gems. Food for thought.